Welcome to another episode of the Mindset Athlete Podcast with me, James Roberts, transformational coach, two-time Paralympian, and TEDx speaker. I have another awesome episode for you today, so let's get straight into it. And on today's show, I've got Chrissy Hiller. Hi. Chrissy works with busy working moms and helps to free them from fad diets and helps to transform them into to confident and unstoppable superheroes. So welcome onto the show, Chrissy. Hi, James. Thanks for having me. That's my pleasure. Oh, it smells real bad now. The dog's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that can stay in, but it's terrific. We'll have to live with it. Um, in terms of obviously, well, you and I know each other from working with Rich Wellington um, uh, pretty well. But and this has been a challenge for me because obviously I did my homework and ultimately people don't know this but I normally wing it or do it on the fly and do it off the cuff but talk to us about your previous life before working in the corporate world who was Chrissy Hiller before becoming a coach and then also in the corporate world okay so um I'm Chrissy and I'm I'm 41 so I was born in 1980 um I um one of two I have a younger brother called Stephen um we grew up in a town that's considered a little bit rough um and our parents got divorced when we were quite young kind of I was nine ten-ish so Stephen was seven or eight um had quite a tough childhood I would say uh when uh, my mum, when my mum and dad split up, we moved out of the family home with my mum and in with her boyfriend, <clears throat> excuse me, but they broke up and we went into sheltered accommodation, me and my brother and my mum, uh, which I hated and hid from. The, uh, the school bus stop was right outside the sheltered accommodation, the hostel, and I used to get to the school bus bus stop a good 20 minutes before anyone else so that no one saw where I came from. And uh, and he, and I used to hang around, make my brother hang around at the bus stop after the bus had dropped us off so no one saw where we went back to. Um, I wasn't particularly sporty as a child. Uh, my parents, you know, my dad's obsessed with clean teeth, so I've got really good teeth. Um, I hated school. I didn't. I didn't um, do A levels or anything. I dropped out after my GCSEs, and I started working at eighteen for T-Mobile, um, then called One to One. So I worked there, and then got into. And then got into my corporate life. Um, had a really difficult time with my own health, weight, fitness, kind of late teens, and then pretty much through my 20s. Um, and then I found nutrition and lifting weights in my 30s. So relative, well, relatively late to... I'll give some perspective because I've had uh, Greg, Greg Fearon on that you know, Mitch Khan that you've had on. Obviously, I've got a background, a long history of sports. What was the driving factor for you to, to want to improve your health then? So I guess through my 20s, I'd always been a member of the local gym and I'd gone and spent 45 minutes on a cardio machine. And then done a few, a few weights, you know, really basic stuff. I used to do spinning classes and stuff. So, and I really liked running. I always really liked running as an adult. I hated running at school. I absolutely hated it. But as an adult, I, I really quite liked it. And um, the spring after me and my husband got married so I was 34 
um i got a place in the london marathon um a sponsorship place through my through the company i worked for and i decided i joined a running club the year before just as something you know a community to i I really like that community feel and decided they inspired me actually my friend leslie inspired me to go for a london marathon place which i did and i trained really hard i'm not a fast runner i'm i could i have endurance i can run at a steady pace for a really long time um but i found training for it really difficult i had a two-year-old uh, it was, you know, you train for London out of COVID times through the winter. Um, I lived in the countryside. It was frozen, cold, wet a lot of the time. But I really enjoyed it. And I, I was so proud of myself for what I achieved because of how rubbish I was at running at school. And um, I engaged with one of my old friends from the gym I used to be in in my early 20s who used to be a PT there Rob and I just said to him I need a little bit of help I'm fine with the running training I'm part of a running club but I'd like to drop a little bit of of body fat because I think the extra weight is slowing me down a little bit I'd like to get on top of my nutrition a bit and also what other exercise can I be doing in between my my running training and he did me like a nutrition plan and started getting me doing some body weight stuff and using some, um, you know, I had a light pair of dumbbells at home and it just completely transformed the way I saw exercise. And so when I did the London Marathon and I finished it, I thought to myself, I love I love moving my body, but I am not spending hours and hours and hours of my week running anymore. You know, I've done that now. Long runs on a Sunday and then all you just want to do is lie in front of the sofa for the rest of the day. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to carry on. And I joined a proper dirty floored, no window bodybuilder gym right near my office. And I loved it. I just loved it. i became obsessed and obviously with your transition to to do what to yeah i can't speak to transition into what you are doing now and being known as obviously your your handle of confidence coach why did it why did you think it was important or empowering for women more specifically so i'm a mum and I truly, truly believe that mums are the powerhouse of the house. They are the the person that keeps the house together. And as a mum and as mums, we rarely put ourselves first. And everything is about everyone else. Everything is about the kids and the husband and the dog and the extended family and the shopping and the washing and all of that. And going, starting to spend time in the gym and focusing on what I was fueling my body with, because the, you know, the exercise I've, I have exercised through my whole adult life. I've taken it more seriously in the last 10 years, but you know, the exercise, the training I, I, I nailed it, but the nutrition was what completely changed my life because I wasn't fueling my body right. I did all of the fad diets. I cut out carbs. I binge restricted. I did all of it and I just couldn't make any difference to my body for the amount of effort I put in in the gym. And what focusing on those things gives me it, there's a couple of things and and what it gives my clients now is when I train that gives me that period of time to me no one's calling me mummy no one can call me because my phone goes in my bag on do not disturb you have to be really present because when you've got a barbell on your back and you're squatting or you're deadlifting or whatever you're doing, 
you've got to be really present because if you start thinking about something else, then you're going to drop the weight. And it gave me a strength, not just a physical strength, but a strength of mind to know that I can achieve absolutely anything I want to achieve. And once I started making those tweaks to my life where I was truly focusing on some things for me, it just put so much else into perspective. And that's what I help my clients do for themselves. This is going to be a difficult question for you to answer now. Why do you think that women are more inclined to put themselves secondary when a male would think not think twice of doing something Mm, I think there's a few reasons for that James I think some of it is a bit about nurture I think we see our mums doing it we see our grandparents doing it and I'm you know I'm really conscious that the younger generation I'm wondering if they see my generation putting myself first a bit more and I'm really hopeful that you know teenage and 20 something women and girls start to put themselves first a bit more but I think we saw it happening in our families with our mums and our grandmothers so I think there's some of that I think I had this conversation with my husband um, the other day actually and I wrote um, a piece of content around it and I said to him why do you think it's like that and and he said I think you know e- evolution is the, the or biology is you carry the children you carry the children you birth the children and if you think about when we were cavemen, you guarded the children. And, and as far as we know, we went out and got the food. And it is it, it is biologically within you to do whatever you can to protect those children and protect the family. And so I think a bit of it is also biology. And then I think some of it is we just assume that unless we do the things, the things don't get done. And I think that becomes an assumption that we then use as an excuse. But you would agree that if you looked at the animal kingdom, that would push back against that. So you look at the the pride, if you use the lions, the women go out and hunt. And the man sits around and sits. And, 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 and that's probably the big portion of it but the, that is probably one of the matriarchal societies if you use uh, I think the elephant would be the other one mm-hmm. the, the, the most important person of, of, of that herd is the female mm-hmm. so why yeah. do you think it, why do you think there's a sticking point when it comes to human beings yeah you're right it's a tough question And I think some of it's because we let it be. We let it be a sticking point. I don't think we push hard enough. I see myself as really bloody lucky. I'm going to be honest. Like me and my husband have a really fair relationship. And, you know, he he uses the term happy wife happy life and he uses it in a really jovial manner but he does so much to support me and I think that's because a lot of the thinking work for the house apart from the finances he deals with that he's the accountant but you know the thinking work the shopping the dinner planning Charlie's you know, dinner money at school and school uniform and all of that. I do all of that. I hold all of that. And I, I, I think we haven't, I don't think we've caught up. I think we're stuck in the days of women stay home, cook, clean, look after babies, man, go out, work, come home, go to the pub for a few pints, come home, wants dinner on table. 
and I I don't think I don't think a lot of it is conscious. And then I think that there are some women who allow it to be that way and don't push back on it because it's just easier. I'd get crucified. I kind of had that mentality in my in my household because I'll give some context. I come, I'm brought up in a matriarchal society, so my dad wasn't around that much, but I obviously had communication with him, but my upbringing was my mom, my aunt, my grandmother. So some of the things I will step out of line sometimes and say something, I'm soon brought into line as well. James, do you really mean what you've said? No, what I've said is probably out of context. And yes, it is seen as sexist or chauvinistic. I won't pull back from the comment, but I will have a discussion about what I've said. Yes, maybe it's a little bit out there as a yeah. as a sentiment, and but that's my upbringing is is maybe a little bit more receptive of sharing the load of. But that's how I've been brought up. It's mm. you can't take advantage too mm. much because ultimately nobody wants to be a doormat and if that's that's your family is one thing that's in a relationship no chance no. Oh, well I think that's brilliant I th- I love that I love that you've been brought up like that and you know one of the things I had this chat with with Greg the other day um or a few weeks ago you know why is it that women think that they have to do everything for their children why do why do we act like slaves for our children? It was ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous, and and I really take that stance with with my with Charlie with my son because when he's older and he leaves home and he moves in with with someone else, male or female, I don't want them to think that they are moving in with some spoiled brat that expects everything to be done for them you know I I he he knows how to cook when he's tall enough he will know how to make a cup of tea he you know he has his little jobs he has to put stuff on the table at dinner time I don't let him load the dishwasher yet because he's as clumsy as me but Um, you know he has his he has his little jobs we don't tidy his room he has to tidy his room you know he has to be if we get him to school and he's forgotten his clarinet or his dodgeball kit or his football kit or whatever you don't get to play clarinet or play sports that day because we live 25 minutes from the school we're not going to go back and get it you have responsibilities you know I want to raise a man I don't want to raise a a a, a man child or someone who just thinks he can sit back and watch someone else pick up after him and I I think far too many women are absolute slaves to their kids I probably I think the disabilities helped me a little bit because I think my family's got an old school approach of we're not going to modern colony we're not going to wrap you up in cotton wool I use the term loosely, we're going to throw you to the wolves. I normally say chuck you in the water and see if you can swim. But that kind of mentality has stood me in steadfast because ultimately I wasn't very... uh, Well, if we hadn't done the meditation before doing that praise thing, I would have kind of brushed off everything that was said as, okay, we, we... we admire you for your drivenness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I would have kind of said, well, okay, it's no big deal. Um, it just comes with the territory. We move on. But I think to to embrace it and to kind of say, well, look at the the life you lived. It's not easy. Um, and I think it depends on the day. And sometimes I'm more embracing of, okay, your day is tough. It's adverse. Okay, that's all right. You, that's what that aspect of will work in your favor with other people because they can relate to it um but obviously on the days that i don't it kind of was well, no big deal let's move on um obviously i'm downplaying it a little bit and kind of making the 
the aspect that that it is minute when it's pretty good gargantuan that's quite difficult word to say but the point that i'm making is that way of thinking is is very 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 few and far between in Mm -hmm. the world that we live in today of i don't want to go into entitlement but in terms of the word of that's banded around of ultimately you know you, you hear on the news i don't watch as much as i did but of freedom and things like that and because of my family being long line in the military i actually know what the word means in terms of and i've i've known because of the disability i've i've, I've been able to be along uh, and around service members who've lost their limbs because of being in conflict well that's the mm. essence of freedom they don't have a choice they're being sent to do a job and they might they may or may not come back with with but ultimately possibly not their life and that's the sacrifice they're willing to do so the 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 word banded around of you know freedom when it comes to covid it's not imprisonment okay i don't want to talk it at length but i think people get too engrossed into into their own personal problems and don't look at the bigger picture but obviously we digress and we come back to what we were talking about of of women themselves sometimes meandering to to, to males it probably comes back to your initial point of it is so, some sort of service or sub sub servitude in a way if i've turned it like that no women would want to do it it's like i'm not going to be a slave to anybody um but th- that's what it is if you, you're not willing to let the other person ultimately make mistakes and be accountable I, and obviously two they're not two in the same be accountable of what, what you're doing with your son i don't think my mom did that to me at that age but i know i had responsibilities but there was more a reward at the end of it it's you do these tasks to get your pocket money thus i never thought Mm -hmm. anything it's not a chore it's not uh something i need to do to get rewarded it's okay i'm doing i'm helping out i'm taking out the bins that's something i've done since oh gosh probably 2025 20 20, 25 years of it's no big Mm -hmm. deal it's it's okay it's just do it and it's and it's helpful yeah. and, and it's 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 re- is rewarding yeah yeah and actually charlie doesn't do it to get pocket money he does it because we ask him to because do i get pocket money for doing the week shopping do i get pocket money for cooking their dinners for them every night no it's an unpaid job so well, I think I think it's probably the right way to do it because ultimately he sees what he's doing as a reward. Whereas for me, it was the cash incentive to to make me initially do it, and then yeah. obviously as I got older and older and older, obviously I did it uh, anyway because uh, it, 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 well, I wouldn't say it's something to do, but as in it was rewarding and okay, I got something in return. Yeah. Whereas as an adult now okay there is no cash it's just the right, the cash it's the right no thing to do there. it's the, no it's not the thought it's just that's that's my part of the household it's to do, to the, do yeah. the bins uh if i don't cook i do the washing up um ultimately i think the only time that that didn't happen was at university and, and ultimately those that have gone to college and university knows what that experience is like uh the the dishes mount up because nobody wants to do it uh <laughs> and ultimately um, I was lucky that I lived in halls all the all the time that I was there. The cleaners always just put them in bin bags, and if you don't if you don't do the dishes, they go in the bin. And probably some people towards the end they kind of went, oh, sure, well, it's no big deal to me. You chuck it in the bin, I get a new set the following year. Whereas for me, I wasn't going to do it with other people's, but you'll need a comment from one of your family members to say that's that's unacceptable. Do something about it. at least do your own yeah mess okay it's not pleasant to look at but but it, it kind of shows the mentality of my evolution for university because that was non that would have been unacceptable at the very beginning of any mm-hmm. maybe like a stack of a few plates not i'm talking about probably head height of dishes if that was in your own household that'd be 
gosh, the 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 kind of stigma you'd have of other people would be horrific. Of okay, yeah. that that's a big sty. Um, you're living in a bed set. Um, it'd be one of those programs or the hoarders or something like that it's like mm, yeah, yeah, yeah you're one of those type of people that you look down upon but okay that's a disorder but cleanliness and ultimately it's a form of confidence if we look at it deeply of if that was your own appearance you've got some mental health issues of you you don't care how you look smell etc 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 that's depression or anxiety mm-hmm. but towards maybe cleanliness in a kitchen i'm going deep here but in terms of overall cleanliness in a kitchen coming back to the initial point obviously woman's never going to like get out of hand obviously male is probably okay no big deal uh it kind of shows i live probably more with males to to, to, to kind of get to that state but it only takes like a few words of from my family to kind of go say, James, come on. Yeah. But it's, it comes back to that ultimately probably the, the female influence of how are other people going to look at it? Ultimately COVID kind of hides that a little bit because everybody's about to be in their own house. Thus nobody sees other people's things. So you maybe get out of, let things kind of slip a little bit but it is confidence at the end of the day it's 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 you you want to represent a strong front Mm. outside absolutely but i so on on that point you've just made covid you know people let things slip a little bit so one of my things through all of the lockdowns was ladies why are you stressing that you haven't hoovered the carpet in two days? No one's coming round. Why are you worried about doing the ironing? People could only see you from the shoulders up. You know, like so many people were, you know, I think it, it, it went one way or the other because So many of the women I work with, they just feel like they're an octopus with 10 10 plates to spin. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as your house is clean, right, let's be honest, it doesn't have to be tidy. As long as it's clean and you're not cooking in a cesspit and showering in, in, you know, mould, then what what does it matter if the washing basket is a little bit full? The washing will still be there tomorrow. You know, like like you can see behind me, James, it is not completely tidy. There is, you know, there are are bits. There's books I haven't put away. Oh, yours is not bad. If people looked at the state of my room, it'd be, they kind of go, well, um, most of it's out of sight. It's out, it's it's over here. And okay, I'm doing an order, do you think? So you can't see it anyway. But in terms of stuff that's out of eye line, and my this is a family trait, both of my mum and my father. So we 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 like our stuff. So I've inherited that and probably gone to excess. Um so we grab more stuff than we, we need, but it's not in in eyesight. Uh, in eye line, it's either below the table, it's out of shot. Um, okay, I deliberately do that. Um, <laughs> yes, for my peace of mind, but I'll move things around on purpose. Okay, be it, I don't know, I might have a piece of clothing that's over here and it being shot. Okay, let's check on the floor for, for the 30 minutes or the hour that I'm talking to somebody else so they don't have a judgment towards mm. ultimate, ultimate. That's ch- probably change from 2021 to if I was to do. Uh, either be a guest or be the host before COVID because ultimately people went on Zoom as much whereas I think it's more uh, tolerable is not the right word but in terms of like, interruption stop and of okay the beginning of the episode I didn't expect the dog to fart but I'll leave that in there because it's happened <laughs> um, it's not the worst thing that he's ever done in an episode he barks I just leave it in there it's like if I can't talk in between the disruption 
it's natural it's normal yeah. it's, you're living in a normal household and I think yeah. people appreciate that it's like well, I'm not the room's not soundproofed it's not it's okay the back door's open um, and and all things like that it's just letting the environments play and I I think I've kind of gone to I'm not as far extreme as Greg and doing off the cuff every single day because that would irritate me some days uh, because it would be like hitting a brick wall it's like okay stuff's not coming this is really frustrating Um, so I'd probably somewhere in between Uh, sometimes it's structured sometimes it's not okay we did that personality trait sometimes I'm probably I probably could take everybody's personality trait on just to do to, to suit that particular day uh i probably fit very well with the personification because i'm able to not be troubled by a time constraint and then obviously be able to be very flexible so as we're recording i've kind of said to myself well if we don't put an episode out every week it's not the end of the world it's no offense to the listener but it, it you've got so much to go back from in archive wise it's going to take you a while to listen to every single episode anyway so for me it's there yes it needs to go out but i'm not stressing myself out to be fitting to somebody else's box mm-hmm. even even the episode itself no makes no reference to time frame I don't say see you next week. I don't see you, see you tomorrow. It's it's see you on the next episode. So I give myself, if I wanted to, I could go limitless and go like the Americans and go to a season. But I think coming back to, to what you were talking about of the female and, and, and wanting to do the, the washing up to be 100%, to have the washing 100%, it, it is this notion of perfection which is unattainable um mm-hmm. obviously i've been stuck in that little way uh, of that mindset of that's obviously the challenge that i've been set is to distance myself from the sports person i can't do it i can't i can't go to the extreme of what you referenced uh and the master man of cutting the head off or of what rich would use because ultimately it still does serve that identity still does serve a purpose i can lock him away and put him in the, in the dungeon and bring him out when I want to, but to cut the head off uh, or to cut my nose out to spite my face to move on, I'm probably not ready to do it. And ultimately, yes, I make reference to it a little bit. And it's normally storytelling, but it's that notion of what you mentioned before of other oh, washing needs to be done, the cabin needs to be cleaned. I think it's easy for me or for my family because we're quite laid back. If it if it's not done, if it's not a, a task that can be done quickly, oh well, it's it's okay. It can, it can it can it can wait. But I think what you were referencing on Monday of your personality trait that would be a little bit more difficult. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, striving for perfection is a massive problem that a lot of women, including myself, have. Last night, let me tell you a story. Last night I cooked I cooked my husband and my son dinner. I cooked them steaks, venison steaks, which are notoriously hard to cook because you start cooking them and they swell up and then it takes really long time to get them cooked. And I overcooked my husband's steak and he likes his steak rare. And... I felt terrible and I apologized about eight times while he was eating it because it wasn't perfect. And he still ate it. He didn't care, but I felt guilty for ruining his steak because I'd tried to do too many things at once while I was cooking. Um, But that is, that is something that so many women deal with this drive to be perfect and just be this perfect mum, partner, wife, sister, daughter, employee, friend. You can't be everything to everyone. And you can't, perfection doesn't exist. 
perfection does not exist. How boring would the world be if everyone was perfect? Jeez. So boring. We wouldn't have jobs, James. Uh, yeah, but nobody's going to be able to, to, to do perfection because look, you got, you've got your, uh, your big brands the other side of the fence, McDonald's, mm. KFC, uh, yeah, the exactly. Linda's, this is endless. Any, any, wherever country you input that 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 branding, because I'll be here, I'd be here all day, just okay. spouting that. But in terms of what you're saying, Chrissy, how, did it eat away at you as well? And have you kind of? Well, I've put it away it? now. Oh. I've put it away now because he ate it and it was fine. And you know, it's not like he doesn't get decent food every day. It was just one. I just I cooked it for too long because I was faffing around making coleslaw but you know it's it's fine but yeah sometimes those things can eat away at you yeah and we'll we'll overthink them and replay them yeah, but the magnet the magnitude of, of that is no big deal because well I say that it's no big deal but in terms of what you class as being raw well not raw you didn't say raw of being rare there's so much plethora of that of you know the the french like it blue and pretty much oh yeah um still breathing you've gotta you gotta send that back because like that thing is like pretty much just come out of the farm and it's on your plate um so okay i'm not generalizing saying all french people are like that but in terms of that's rare for one country some people in britain will kind of go mm, need to cook that a bit longer please because uh, it's still it's still it's still quote unquote breathing on on the plate and uh but obviously it's the de- definition you're not you're not a trained chef ultimately you could criticize your chef because okay you've got years of experience you should be able to tell at which time frame uh, it needs to come off off the grill or come out the frying pan or the oven. Um, ultimately, uh, everybody's been to, I won't name a chain, but in terms of one of those ping, ping kind of places, either, it's either cooked in the microwave or it's overcooked. Everybody's been to that. So you, you, you normally go one step from what you, what you want as ideal. So we're talking about perfection when it comes to food. Thus, so they make it right for you and not of, of you as for well done. It's not crucified. Yeah. But you see, the key in the story that I've told is I know how to cook a steak and we've been married for nearly eight years. I know how to cook him a steak, but I was trying to do too many things whilst cooking the steak. And that is the problem that women have is they try to take on too many things. And then you bear mistake. Yeah, but I, I haven't put this piece of content out. Yeah, it goes a step further than that, Christy, in terms of um, the mental process. Okay, this post relates to sleep. Obviously, it takes, it impacts on your sleep because your brain's still processing multiple tasks. And I was relaying this to a teammate of mine at basketball on Tuesday of we've got a teenager that pretty much can't concentrate on his own tasks. So it makes other people have to do multiple tasks for him. So I was joking around and kind of saying, well, I'm having to do your thing for you and for myself. Thus, I'm making my, I didn't think about it anyway. It doesn't impact my, it, I don't think it affects on my sleep, but it's making my brain having to comprehend multiple tasks. And one of those was not important to me whatsoever. Mm. That was your job. You can't do that. I can see that. But that's obviously a teenager. They've got too many things going on. Yeah. But once anyway, and not in the moment. But like you were referencing of uh, the the multitasking. Okay, one task, step by the wayside. Uh, obviously, Rich mentions it quite a lot of. He does one task at one time. I don't always do that. Um, I probably step into the women's camps. Like, well, if I can get this job done a little bit, we can it goes into that it flows into that one quite nicely we can do both of them at the same time uh i think greg's probably similar with being very uh loose 
and fluid. I think he'd probably get stem from one to the other. Thus, he's multitasking. Um, Mitch definitely is at the moment with his messenger. So I think we all do multitask, but it just looks in different guises in terms of, okay, a woman is more likely to multitask and a man doesn't. It's like, well, that's probably not true. Um, what, that men can't multitask? Well, they probably lived up to that stereotype for so long. If, if you multitask, you're going to do something wrong. That's all I'm mean. Let's focus on one job. Get that perfect. And somewhat rub it in your face. I've done that job perfectly. <laughs> and, and, and then move on. But in terms of you can multitask, I would call it probably something different. It, it is doing multiple tasks. I'm just not doing it simultaneously. That's still yeah. multitasking because I'm ticking yeah. off multiple things on a on a list but that's ultimately uh my way of thinking it's it is it, as you put it multi-layered it's it's very logical and it's very um what was the other one it's very distinctive as what it does so that's what i think mm. about it it's multi it's multitasking if i'm ticking off multiple boxes in my eyes or in my world but that probably stems from the environment that I've cultivated in, like the yeah. majority of sites I was mentioning before. And sport is very much like that. It's you, yeah. you, you things repetitively becomes automatic. You add another layer to it and pretty much yeah. that's multitasking. Um, so coming back to, to you now, Chrissy, so we don't go really off on a tangent, which I nearly have done in this episode. How did you come up with your three? You don't call it three AM method. I'm just going to be lazy. The triple was it triple, the triple method is what you've called it. My method. Yeah. Well, you you know how I came up with that. It's the unstoppable method, James. Yeah, but it's not it says that on the website. Um. So I came up with that because there are three things that you need to work on as a busy working mum to help you to get to where you want to be. And that's making sure that your nutrition is in the right place, that you're fueling your body because if you're eating rubbish, you're going to feel rubbish. And actually lots of people think they know what they should be eating, but actually they just can't tick off a lot of the basics in my world. So, so many women that I help just don't eat enough fruit and veg. Like if if I can get them to tick off three portions a day, that's an achievement. So many of them, you know, don't eat great amounts of protein. You know, the diets are really, really carbohydrate based and they wonder why they're picking. So many of them go for, you know, because they're tired, because they're so busy it's chocolate or biscuits and caffeine to get them through. So for me, it's about giving an understanding of how you can feel your best by eating great food. Then with fitness, you know, I, I would love to get more women lifting weights. I would love to because it's so important for their health. But my starting point with so many of them is let's find something you enjoy doing and you can do, you can do consistently. So with some of my clients, it's just getting them out for walks and trying to get them moving a bit more. So, you know, particularly after the last 18 months with COVID, you know, I've got some clients that have barely been moving a thousand steps a day because they they do the school run and then they sit at a desk until it's time to pick the kids up again. 
So just getting them moving. And then if I can get them lifting some weights and doing something a bit different, other than just being attached to a spinning bike, then um, then I will do that as well. But it's all about finding something that they enjoy and they can do consistently. And then with the mindset part of it, it's about understanding behavior change. And I know you're a massive uh, fan of atomic habits. Me too. I've heard you talk about that before. I still um, haven't finished it though. Um, oh some people really find that surprising. Um, obviously, I, I've, uh, I don't know how many books I've been given over the last year or so. And I think I said, even said to Rich, like, I do read them, but I might not finish them, which he wasn't too pleased about. I thought, well, I'm being honest. It's, 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 I'm similar to, I was trying to think who was, who said it, Nikos, in terms of uh, consuming content via, my, my reasoning is a lot different, but it's, it is a lot easier to, to consume uh, via the visual, because you can remember mm. the picture. Uh, whereas, a book I've always had a problem with it since I was a young young age it's like well I've got to use my imagination thus if I don't want to do that it's a challenge so uh, it's a love-hate relationship with a book probably because of and everybody's probably slightly similar with school as it's a chore mm. thus reading is associated with learning I don't want to do it but for pleasure uh, it's challenging that belief because ultimately it's learning thus I'm improving uh, myself um, so it's been open to different beliefs different ways of thinking I think that's why podcasting is probably the new version of a book and um, because you're always learning from from be it different podcasts different guests um it will change my perception on certain things periodically not always do i agree uh with people um and i think what you you mentioned of that is is always test it's it's, it's t challenging yourself because if you can get a better understanding of how you move which is, uh, ultimately is exercise uh, just it comes in different guises the nutrition one i can understand with you your niche in particular because it's brainwashing of advertisement uh and okay my client has a teenage daughter but he was referencing weetabix i'm gonna have a field day with that post um because of their slogan uh, i won't say it because i don't want to get sued um but in terms of the 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 rhetoric of the, the the brainwashing manipulation is is pretty deep rooted. Doesn't matter if you're in the UK, the US is probably far worse. Um, and that's pretty much five every five minutes. If that's all the person sees, obviously it's going to affect their 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 mental well being and their perception to the world. Um, mm. I had somebody mention um, the difficulty around anxiety and depression obviously a probed in that and, and it's like you don't have to put it on my feed your answer you could privately message me and his was based on previous experiences okay and he put can you understand it's like yeah i can understand because i've been there it's just mm -hmm. that you don't know that is of of being okay it's not in the public domain of being bullied at school it's just a perception of i'm looking back as we're in that time of reflection i think 2021 and uh, 2020 and 2021 you look at everything in, under a microscope of okay was this prejudice was this discrimination was this bullying did i view it as that when i was grew up? probably not of yes i was probably obviously the odd one out because um, i had one missing limb but in terms of trying to make not make it jovial of it i was the weaker person in the group that's mm. cool okay you're gonna be okay well let's take the piss out of that person thus everybody gets a laugh 
at my expense. Did I think it was bullying at the time? No, probably on, on reflection now, it definitely is. Um, why it was done, I don't know, because those people admire me now, which is kind of um, a weird one to, to accept because it's, well, why did you do that if you now admire me for what I went on to achieve? Uh, but I think what you, 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 you're you saying is quite deep rooted and that's why I put, I put a big focus on mindset because yes, it's more entertaining. Yes, it's more thought provoking because everybody's going to be different. That their, their journeys are going to be obviously different to, to where they started and where they get to and maybe where they come to speak to you. But the fitness is going to be the same. The nutrition is under underlying is going to be slightly different, but it's the mental approach to how do you perceive something? Okay. One conversation was, um, you'll see some similarities to me a couple of months ago. The person was getting animated because they didn't believe he was disabled. Thus he had to come, to, you know, get the gloves on like I did a couple, a couple of months ago. I can relate mm. to that because ultimately I, I still do it, but sometimes I take great delight in doing it on purpose. Um, but yeah. obviously I know he wasn't doing it on purpose. He, he's conf confrontates, conf not confrontate, taking on the world because he's trying to prove, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. No. Um, I don't, I don't try and hide it. It's shorts. If you've got something to say, okay receive it um i think nikos was one of the ones of uh asked me on the beach of when the old lady of do you normally get i get that loads of times it's, not, it's no big deal i move on and i and i and i go about my day uh obviously i made that into a piece of content and it went viral and people were kind of had their own point of views as okay james you're being harsh no that's how you read it i didn't say how I took on board what she said. Okay, she said, life's tough. Life's tough for everybody. Uh, the other comment, uh, what was the other one that they said locally? Can't remember, but that was stronger. I didn't mm. bat an eyelid, but I'm going the right way when things do that of, okay, that particular person had to read it four times and they still came to that conclusion. It's like, mm. okay, I'm not being harsh. That's what she said, the lady. Nikos was a little bit more generous of that's the the theory that she goes, no, it doesn't matter what age group it comes from, it will be. If that is the the upbringing that they've been, uh, where am I going with this? The upbringing that they've been I can't think in terms of completely gone, but in terms of it's probably con complete op opposite to, to you, to your house or with your son of we're going to take them away from conflict. Thus we don't have to deal with it. So that's going to, that, that kind of vocabulary language is going to, it's going to stay constant because you're not changing the narrative. If the person had the grandson or granddaughter with them and the kid was willing to ask that same question and you didn't take them out of that environment, you kind of stop that in its bud because then they're more open to not stop and stare points. They get their yeah. question answered and they're more educated. But that's all down to mindset and that's down to a willingness to be open, transparent, honest, Ultimately, you and I will see these kind of conversations daily, but a lot of people aren't willing to do that because it's not com it's not it's not comfortable. It's uncomfortable. No, it's not. And sitting on my ass is a lot easier to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The fitness and the nutrition, like you know, most women come to me to lose weight. It's never the only thing that we we do, never. But actually, the science of losing the weight is quite simple. It's the actions and the behaviours that underpin it, and therefore the mindset that becomes the difficult thing. 
it's the key. It's the key. Mindset is the key. Well, I've never been. I've not been as as open to. I'll call it mindfulness, so we can just the the, 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 the dissociate the two and not have, not be confused. But you only got to go back fifteen years, and I would think, oh yeah, that's total rubbish. It's that's not going to work. That is not. It's not. It's not going to improve me. It's not going to improve my performance. Obviously, I don't think like that now, but. I I I would probably would love to be able to take what I know now and put it there. Obviously, I can't because that's hindsight, and ultimately you can't go back and live uh, past past glories and trying to um, change them because that's not possible. Uh, but that that is probably most of the sticking point. But that's just by the language of of being open of you know I've, I've chatted with a few people let, let recently talking about their personal history oh that's something different it's not it's not every day i get to see the four letters and you know exactly what it is um okay that person was very i need to go look like what it was because the conversation was very 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 structured in terms of i can't change based on x y and z Mm. Um, and it kept being told by other family members you can't keep living in the past but what he wouldn't it it comes down to my communication at the end of the day I take from that of I was saying and what if I was to talk to any athlete is compartmentalization you can go back to the past and whatever whatever you don't want to use you just you just um, completely ignore whereas he couldn't see that it's like Oh, you're telling me to go back in the past, but I've got this associated with that. Da, 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 da. It's like, well, no, what mm-hmm. I'm trying to communicate to you, I was taking probably speaking to somebody else to be able to, ah, oh, that's what I'm not doing. Yes, yeah, all right to do this, but you're still attached to that. It's like, well, these are, this is, and he was very proud to talk about it. This is happiness. This is end up being bad. In the in 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 the future, mm. and but that's that is probably the catch twenty two. It's it, it's making people aware in the moment is is a is a skill in itself, and it's like you 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 say of uh, ultimately I think the third third A is action. That's difficult for a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. Really difficult. Whereas I, I think, well, you, you in, I can't remember what you said to me. And I th- the only one that's really stuck in my mind is Rob's because he challenged me. And it's only I, fo- I focused on the negative of what you said and it stuck with me and that's it. Because uh, he said, oh, you need to become more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, that's going to take some time then. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but obviously everybody else's were quite similar. It's like, oh, that's quite positive And uh, that's what I think about myself. But I'm probably less inclined to give myself a pat on the back because it's like well you do it anyway so carry on mm. um but what he said obviously is true is getting to be more vulnerable yeah okay that's going to take some working with what is under this further and further under the surface uh i think i'm better than when rich first met me of it was nearly i think about almost two and a half years for me Compared to the rest of you, Danny's and Greg probably know me more because they've met me more. And then I've probably met, I've spoken to Danny loads. Uh, you've yeah. probably seen it like a real evolution. And obviously we're pretty much the same. Okay, he's extrovert and I'm introvert, but we're the same. That's probably why it's very, not. I wouldn't call it confrontational. It is thought-provoking because it's deep it's like okay i don't agree with you because of this 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 and obviously you won't agree with okay that's an excuse what's the real reason i don't know um so those are those would be interesting conversations that'd be uh if we finally get the the episode out that'd be uh somebody's gonna have to 
I'm strapping, strapping, strapping the seat. <laughs> You're going to have to set a timer. You have to set a timer for that. You two could talk for hours. Well, that's all right. That's a challenge. Multiple episodes. But that being said, Chrissy, let me ask you this, this penultimate question then. I, I, I like to ask all my guests. And I'm going to slide reframe it. Now I'm tweak it up. Just, just for me, I'll take care. I'll give you two choices. If you had to sit down with any athlete, dead or alive, who would that be and why? And the you second... normally ask people coach, don't you? No, no, I normally ask what athlete. I've been okay. quite naughty. I've been giving people two. So, and then the other one is, you've been listening to the recent ones. Then. Uh, and then the second one is, what coach would you like to sit down with, dead or alive? <sighs> I'd for me for an athlete it would have to be probably a boxer but I don't really know which one and let me tell you why I'm not interested in boxing I I don't watch it but it's such an ego sport. I think I'd love to get under the skin of some of that ego. Yeah, and well, that's just... they, they've, they've got that. It's it's um, it's a fascination I've got as well because ultimately they don't think about losing whatsoever because they don't want to contem- They don't even want to have it come into the existence of I'm going to win, no matter what. Yeah, so it's, that, that's the fascination. Some that it's that you know maybe I don't know it's it's really boring. But because he's from near where I'm from, maybe it would be someone like Anthony Joshua. I know that's really cur- current, but or, or just or maybe Chris Eubank would be fascinating. That would be fascinating. But just to understand, like. I want to know how you can be so dead certain of what you are going to achieve in that situation. Like, I just want to know the ins and outs of what they tell themselves because they must have multiple tools for it. It must, you know, we, we talk about having our story and our who is as as part of our peer group you know and affirmations and stuff like that they must have all of that stuff like they must have the vision board of dreams and I just would find that so fascinating um and then coach for me so I thought about this before and I've got two answers, which is really cheeky. So I'd really I'd also really like to speak to Tony Robbins to see what he would change about his business model, because I think he's try from what I see, he's trying to unpick his business model a little bit because obviously his business model is just Tony Robbins. So if he doesn't stand up on a stage and people have turned up to expect Tony Robbins, like he's kind of exhausting himself. So he's using some sub coaches at the moment. And I think he's trying to introduce that. So I'd love to um I'd love to find out what Tony Robbins would do differently if he could have his time again. And then um, the other the other thing I thought of was um, I'm a big football fan and I was raised as a Spurs fan. And Boy. pardon? For you. For me. Um, but I um, absolutely adore Harry Redknapp. I love him. And I would love to sit and have a beer with Terry Redknapp. Terry Redknapp, sorry. Harry Redknapp was thinking about my uncle Terry and what he would say about that because he was a massive West Ham fan and he really liked Harry Redknapp too. Um, 
so yeah so i oh, sorry i chose two that's all right and you know what's coming next then because you've listened to the previous episode if you had to summarize what we've been speaking about into one sentence for people to take away what would that be um it would be Chrissy and James go on a winding path through why women do everything and why mindset is key. So Chrissy, once again, thanks again for coming on the Mindset Athlete Podcast. Thank you for having me, James. It's been my pleasure. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed this episode and got loads from it. Anything that was included and discussed will be available in the show notes below. And I would love to hear from you. Come and connect and ask your questions. I've been James Roberts from jamesowenroberts.com. Remember this quote by Chris Hart. An athlete is a mindset. It's how you prepare, think and execute not by some elite status or physical stature. Anybody can be an athlete.